On the 29th of August 1949, the Soviet Union conducted its first nuclear test, codenamed RDS-1, at the Semipalatinsk test site in modern-day Kazakhstan. The device had a yield of 22 kilotons. The bombings of Hiroshima and Nagasaki in 1945 had prompted Joseph Stalin to order the development of nuclear weapons within five years. The young nuclear physicist Igor Kurchatov was charged with leading this project. It is no coincidence that the RDS-1 device bore a close resemblance to the U.S. Fat Man bomb dropped on Nagasaki, as Soviet espionage had managed to obtain details about the U.S. Manhattan Project and the Trinity test on the 16th of July 1945. The Soviet device was therefore also a plutonium-based implosion device. The fallout from the nuclear test drifted to the northeast, reaching the region of Altai Krai. Some United States Air Force WB-29 weather reconnaissance aircraft were fitted with special filters to collect atmospheric radioactive debris. On 3 September 1949, the Air Force Office of Atomic Energy had a WB-29 fly from Miswa Air Base in Japan to Ielson Air Force Base in Alaska. The plane collected some debris during this flight. This data was then cross-checked with data from later flights, and it was determined that the Soviet Union had effectively tested a nuclear weapon, altering it to the fact that its monopoly on nuclear weapons had been broken, which was publicly confirmed by U.S. President Truman on 23 September 1949 and a day later by the Soviet Union itself. Within a few years, the Cold War nuclear arms race was at full steam. In 1951, the United States exploded the first thermonuclear device in the George test, to be followed two more years later by the Soviet Union with the RDS-6 test. By the end of the Cold War, the United States would conduct 1,032 nuclear tests, the Soviet Union 715. Many of the fission-based devices leave behind radioactive isotopes that have contaminated air, water and soil in the areas immediately surrounding them, downwind and downstream of the blast site. According to the records that the Russian government released in 1991, the Soviet Union tested 969 nuclear devices between 1949 and 1990. Soviet scientists conducted the tests with little regard for environmental and public health consequences. The detrimental effects of the toxic waste generated by weapons testing and processing of radioactive materials are still felt to this day. Even decades later, the risk of developing various types of cancer, especially those of the thyroid and the lungs, continues to be elevated far above national averages for people in affected areas. Iodine-131, a radioactive isotope that is a major byproduct of fission-based weapons, is retained in the thyroid gland, and so poisoning of this kind is commonplace in impacted populations. The Soviets set off 214 nuclear bombs in the open air, between 1949 and 1962, the year the United Nations banned atmospheric tests worldwide. The billions of radioactive particles released into the air exposed countless people to extremely mutagenic and carcinogenic materials, resulting in a myriad of deleterious genetic maladies and deformities. The majority of these tests took place at the Semipalatins Test Site, or STS, located in northeast Kazakhstan. Testing at STS alone has exposed hundreds of thousands of Kazakh citizens to the harmful effects, and the site continues to be one of the most highly irradiated places on the planet. When the earliest tests were being conducted, even the scientists had only a poor understanding of the medium and long-term effects of radiation exposure. In fact, the STS was chosen as the primary site for open-air testing precisely because the Soviets were curious about the potential for lasting harm that their weapons held. The Soviet Union conducted 456 of its tests at the Semipalatins test site, with severe consequences for the local population, including high cancer rates, genetic defects and deformations in babies. After its independence from the Soviet Union, Kazakhstan closed the test site on 29 August 1991, exactly 42 years after RDS-1. On the initiative of Kazakhstan, the United Nations proclaimed 29 August as the International Day Against Nuclear Tests in 2009. Thank you for watching till the end. Please consider encouraging us by subscribing to our channel. In order to show your support, don't forget to like and share the video.